last class in lecture three we were talking about energy transfer and we did that fruit lab where we were calculating how many calories would be in biomass and so on. I didn't get a chance to work one of the problems that talks about primary productivity of plants and we did this in your notes but there was an example that was on this worksheet that I'll have you get out in a second and it requires you to use these conversions on your formula sheet. So take a second to hit pause and then I want you to find this worksheet that went with lecture three over the transfer of energy. And we're going to go all the way to the very last problem here. And I have those formulas for you here, but you have to remember whenever you start to see a problem that it's talking about things like milligrams of oxygen per liter then you're going to have to know to go to the formula sheet to find these equations or these conversions. It says we determined that aquatic plant produced three milligrams of oxygen per liter and hopefully you recognize that the plant is doing photosynthesis. It's making glucose and then oxygen is a byproduct. So if we want to know how much glucose they're making we can figure that out if we even know the amount of oxygen they're producing because they're going to produce oxygen at the same rate that they're producing glucose. So if you know one, then you can figure out the other one. It says, determine how much carbon was fixed, and hopefully you know that means how much CO2 was converted to organic molecules, like C6, H12, O6 in the Calvin cycle. If we're given milligrams of oxygen per liter, we can see that matches this part right here. So they're giving you that number. So we have three milligrams of O2 per liter. The formula says to times that by 0.698. That gives us 2.09, and this is what we're getting here, milliliters now of O2 per liter. And now that I have milliliters, I can plug that in here, multiply it, and then that's going to give us how many milligrams of carbon. That's what the question was asking us, is how much carbon was fixed. So we'll take 2.09 milliliters of O2 per liter, times it by 0.536, and that's going to give our milligrams of carbon that was fixed. And our answer is 1.12 milligrams of carbon was fixed if we find an increase of that many milligrams of oxygen per liter in a solution or in the water. Another idea that I didn't get a chance to cover last class that dealt with lecture three is when you have diagrams that are showing you something like this, and we were going to have a homework quiz, but we didn't have enough time last class. One thing that you need to know, there's not going to be a formula associated with it. It's just simple math. In this situation, it wants to know how much biomass is making up the grasses. Well, you're going to have something that's the total. So this is the total amount of biomass that we had in the producers this much is in the trees, this much is in the shrubs, so what's going to be left of the total is going to be what's in the grass. So it's just simple math to answer that question. The next thing I want you to locate is that lab that we started last class with the stobates. And we're going to go to the next page. In your lab groups that I assigned last class, because you started this with a group of individuals, I want you to get back in those groups. I want you to work on doing the stomate peel so that ultimately you can make this decision about the plant in which we did the stomate peel on. Now, at each lab table, you're going to find you have two slides already prepared for you. If you look carefully, written with wax pen, you're going to see one of them says top and the other one says bottom. Since you are only going to have a few microscopes to do this, then you need to have two people tackle doing the stomate density or calculating the stomate density from the top of the leaf and then the other two can 
work on figuring out the stomate density from the bottom of the leaf. Remember to determine stomate density, you have to have the number of stomates in view, and then you have to be able to calculate the surface area of the field of view. To do that, you're going to use that ruler to figure out the diameter. Once you know the diameter, you can have the radius. Remember, area of a circle is pi r squared. So then you take the number of stomates divided by the area of the field of view, and that's going to tell you your stomate density. If you have an organism or a plant that has no stomates on top, then that tells you that they're growing in a dry climate because those species or populations have adapted over time to only have stomates on the underside of the leaf where it's shaded, and it's going to be cooler there, so there'll be less transpiration out of those stomates in those warm climates. If you find that there's plenty of stomates on top of the leaf and on the bottom of the leaf, then that means that you're growing a plant that normally isn't in an area or growing during a time where there's a lack of water. It's getting plenty of water during the growing season, and it can afford to have an excess of stomates to bring in more CO2 for photosynthesis. As a quick reminder that whenever you go to figure out the diameter of the field of view, you guys are going to use a ruler and place it underneath your lens. Whichever lens power you use to count your stomates, then you need to measure the diameter of the field of view for that lens as well. So remember, each little mark there is a millimeter, so you can estimate the diameter and the radius of the field of view. Now, after your group has finished up this stomate peel lab, this back page, so you need to be answering all these questions, you can hand that in. In those same lab groups, I want you to find the worksheet that goes with lecture four, and I want you to go all the way down to the population growth problems, and as a lab table, as a group, I want you to work through these and checking answers with each other.